Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the modified accrual basis, which is one of the basis of accounting. We have many. So it's very important to look at the accounting basis from a different perspective in order to understand what is modified accrual. We're going to start with the cash basis of accounting. And I hope as an accounting student taking a governmental accounting course, you understand what is the cash basis. Nevertheless, we are going to review it briefly. What is the cash basis of accounting? The cash basis is when do you recognize revenues and when do you recognize expenditure? Well, under the cash basis, revenue is recognized when available, when cash is available. And expenses, and specifically they call them expenditure, are recognized when cash paid and that's why it's called the cash basis if you receive the cash it's considered revenue when you pay the cash it's considered an expenditure i hope you know this now i also you hope i hope you know that this is not a gap method this is not a gap method so when you took intermediate one intermediate two advanced accounting you did not use cash basis what you used is accrual or full accrual and in a nutshell what is the basis of full accrual? When do you recognize revenue? When do you recognize expenses? You would recognize revenue when earned. It means you did the work, you complete your side of the contract, you deliver the product, you earn the revenue. You don't have to receive it in cash. You can receive it in cash later. You recognize the revenue now. Expenses, and here we are using the word expenses, are recognized when incurred. What does that mean? It means you would record your expenses as soon as they are incurred, it means you have a responsibility for those expenses, although you have not paid them yet. So, we have the cash basis on one end, relying everything on cash, and we have the accrual or for a full accrual on the other end. Now, those are kind of the two extreme bases of accounting. Guess what? We have something in between, and that's called modified accrual. Modified accrual is something a little bit like cash accounting, something a little bit like accrual. It has the features of both. That's why it's called modified. Now we have other measurement. Now we call it modified. You can also call it for that matter, modified cash. But since in textbook, the tradition is to call it modified accrual, but nevertheless, you can call it modified cash because it's in, in some instances, it's similar to cash and others, it's similar to accrual. So, when do we recognize revenue? When do we recognize expenses? Revenue are recognized when they are measurable and available. And don't worry, we're going to discuss this. And expenditures are recognized when incurred. So notice, when incurred is similar to full accrual. It's similar to full accrual. But revenues are recognized when measurable and available, which is a little bit different. And it's not like cash. It's similar to cash. We will see what measurable and available is. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, ForhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So the modified basis of accounting is a new method. And I, if you're taking governmental accounting, this will be the first time you view this. And governmental accounting is difficult because if you don't fully understand full accrual, you will find difficulty understanding full accrual. The modified basis is usually used by governmental entities and not for profit organization and we will explain why why do they use this method this method combines as i mentioned the ba the, the basis for cash and the basis for accrual it has the basis for both the purpose is to provide a more accurate representation of the entity's financial position because government entities they don't you don't care about their profitability you don't care how well they are using the resources for government entities remember you want to hold them accountable. So modified accrual is a better measurement if you want to hold them accountable, and you will see why shortly. So the modified accrual basis focuses on the flow of financial resources, 
and recognize revenues and expenditure when they become measurable and available. So what you care about is how well they are doing basically on a budgetary term. Budgetary term means in the short in the short term, how well they are doing because you want to hold them accountable. Like for example, a company, let's take for the sake of illustration, just to compare and contrast, a company like Amazon, a company like Amazon, it took them 10 years until they became profitable. That's fine. Investors are okay with this. They are looking for long-term investments. Well, when you judge a government entity, you, you don't care about 10 years. You don't care about three years. Why? Because you might move out. That's not your concern. Your concern is you want to hold them accountable when you are a citizen under that entity. Therefore, you need a different accounting measurement. This is why we use modified accrual. Why? Because it's you're going to see the way we measure revenues, the way we measure expenses, also the way we measure assets and liabilities. It will help us with accountability issues, not profitability, not long-term prospect of the entity. We're not interested in that. So let's go back to revenues. Again, what did we say about revenues? We recognize revenues when both revenue is measurable and available. What does measurable means? <laughs> measurable means you can measure it. You can put a dollar amount on it, and that's not difficult. For government means that the amount can be reasonably estimated. That's fine. We can estimate it. Now, available. What is available? Okay. A leave available is when the revenue is collected within the current period. That's great. If it's collected within the current period, that's available. If I'm getting the money, that's available. Or soon enough after the end of the period. Now, how do we define soon enough? We're going to see in most governmental textbook and in most government, it's 60 days after the period end. Now, why 60 days? What is the what is the logic behind this number? So I did not collect it in this period because for cash basis, I have to have it this period. Government says, no, you have 60 days to count that as revenue for this period. So once the period ends, so let's assume this is year one, guess what? You have 60 days, an additional 60 days to include revenues in year one. Now, why? Here's the assumption. The assumption is this. In year one, you, you are going to incur certain expenses, your expenditure, let's call them expenditure. You're going to you're gonna incur some cost. And because we, in businesses, we use credit, simply put companies, they kind of give, give each other a time period to pay. So you might incur an expenditure here and you may not pay it until within 60 days of the next year. Well, guess what? Since the, the expenditure happens in year one, well, the money that's coming in year two is meeting that expenditure. Therefore, we'll say, well, Soon enough, it's as if it happened in that year. So that's why we said it's measurable and available and we define available 60 days because within those 60 days, you're going to receive some money and some, that money will be used to pay current liabilities that was outstanding as of year one. An example of revenues, we're going to have many, many lectures about revenues, which we do have many lectures about revenues, property taxes, sales taxes, certain grants, so on and so forth. Expenditure is easy because it's more similar to, to the accrual. I recognize when the related liability is incurred rather when the cash is paid. So it's not like the cash, it's more like the accrual. And simply put, an expenditure is a decrease in financial resources to settle a liability with current financial resources. So when you pay, when you pay your liabilities, what do you pay them with? You pay them with cash. You cash would leave you. That's a financial resource. And specifically, that's a current financial resource. And remember this word current because we're going to be emphasizing this word shortly. So expenditure are finance with current financial resources current financial resources mainly cash this is a little bit different than the cash basis because under the cash basis you wait until you pay here you don't wait until you pay if a liability incurred and you are going to be using current financial resources you have not used it yet but you are going to be using it it's an expenditure so simply put if a government order supplies the expenditure is recognized when the supplies are received. Now we have an obligation and the related liability is incurred because now we receive them. We have the either return them or pay for them. You have you have the obligation rather than than when the payment was made under the cash basis, you, you wait until the payment is made. So the modified accrual, what we just did, we explain how revenue and expenditure, which is expenditures easier to understand than revenues because it should be because it's more similar to full accrual revenues is measurable and available now let's move from the income statement because revenues and expenditure are in quote income statement account move to the balance sheet which what we called measurement focus 
what are we measuring? What's on the balance sheet? The balance sheet is assets and liabilities. So what is being measured? Which assets and which liabilities are we measuring? Now, I hope you know at this point, if, you, if, you, if you're thinking, what do we measure? Which assets and which liabilities? As far as you know, we measure all assets and all liabilities. And indeed, when we're using full accrual, we use something called the economic resource measurement focus. And the economic resource measurement focus, basically a term. It's a term that what's the definition of it? You measure all assets, all liabilities, economic, everything, regardless of their timing or duration, whether that asset is a long-term asset or a short-term asset, whether that liability, whether that liability is a short-term liability or a long-term liability, we capture it, we measure it, we measure it on the balance sheet if we are using economic resource measurement. So it focuses on the entity's total economic resources, everything, all your long-term assets. When you measure a company, when you invest in a company, you don't only look at their current assets, you look at everything. Why do you want to measure their operational accountability? Overall, how well they are doing. You're not only interested in short-term, you're interested in long-term. And when we say economic resource measurement, it's the equivalent word of full accrual or simply accrual. Now let's talk about governmental accounting. What is the focus of the fund when it comes to governmental accounting? We learn about funds. What's the focus of the fund? The focus of the fund is accountability. Are they meeting the accountability? Are they meeting what they are promised promise to meet? So here, the focus is different. The focus is not economic resources. We don't care about all the government assets, all the government liabilities. What we care about is their current financial resource measurement. Current means current assets and current liabilities. We want to see how well you are utilizing, how well you are using your current assets and current liabilities. So we're going to report on the inflow and outflow of current financial resources, which are what? Cash and other items expected to be converted to cash during the period. You know, supplies, inventory, um, account receivable, converted means also burned, used. Now, the purpose is you don't care about the overall assets. You want to measure physical accountability. Are they meeting their legal and budgetary needs? That's what I'm looking at. Okay, this is why we used modified accrual. So when we are measuring governmental fund, we don't care about economic resources. Think about an, a government, even your local government, your municipality. What is their assets? They, they might have roads, streets, bridges. We don't care about those. Yes, they, it's great. That's, that, those assets might generate future revenue. I don't care about them. I'm a citizen. You set a budget. I want to see how well you are using the money that's coming in, how well you are spending this money. Current financial measurement focus versus when you look at a company, you're looking at the economic resource measurement. You're looking at everything. So the budget, it, the budget that matters for a government for the funding, for the government funds, not everything. So you would ignore the long-term assets, long-term liabilities when you are using modified accrual. Now you say, so what do we do with those? Don't worry, we're gonna look at a few examples, explain how the difference between the two, but we don't report them on the financial statements of the fund. So let's summarize basically what we just did so far. Uh, kind of, I'm going to ignore cash because we don't care about the cash basis. Let's talk about for full accrual. Under the full accrual basis, remember, the measurement basis, everything, full accrual, all assets, all liabilities, or simply put, accrual. The measurement focus, we call it economic resources. We're looking at the all economic resources. Who uses this? Type of entities, well, regular businesses, but also proprietary funds, which, is, which are government funds. But remember, proprietary funds are business-like funds. Fiduciary funds, they use full accrual which is economic resources, and you're gonna, we're going to learn later about government-wide financial statements that use full accrual. Ignore the cash basis, modified accrual. The modified accrual, the measurement basis, you're looking at short-term assets, short-term liabilities. The measurement focus is current financial res resources, current financial resources. That's what I'm looking to do. Type of entities that uses modified accrual? Well, governmental fund statement. Which, which one are the governmental fund statement, which we talked about when we talked about fund accounting? The general fund, which we have one, we could have many debt funds, capital project funds, special revenue funds, permanent funds. Those are governmental fund statements and those funds uses modified accrual. Again, what is modified accrual? 
It's how we measure revenues. How do we measure expenses? How do we record them? Not how we measure, measure, and measure them. How do we record them? But the best way to illustrate this is to look at an example or two or go to Farhat Lectures and look at additional multiple choice, true, false, and also additional examples that's going to help you understand this. Understanding qualified accrual is the basis for governmental accounting. It's an accounting method that you have to be familiar with. It's a new method, modified accrual. Don't worry, you will, you will get comfortable with it. Whether you are taking a governmental accounting course, CPA exam, I can help you understand this inside out. Good luck, study hard, and invest in yourself.